Academy Award winning director James Mall spoke to News 46 today to tell us all about his latest project, a documentary film on the band The Foo Fighters entitled Back and Forth. He's going to speak to us in an exclusive interview and you're going to see some of the trailers from the film. At the end of this, we're going to be giving away one pair of tickets to the premiere tomorrow night in Las Vegas at the Rave Town Square 18 at 6 p.m. It's one night only, but it's one big night because the movie is going to be sent via satellite to theaters all over the U.S. And then after the screening of the movie, the Foo Fighters uh, are going to play a live concert that will also be sent via satellite, and it's going to be in 3D. Wow. They're going to be at their studio in Northridge for this concert. Nobody else gets to see this except for people who are going to this premiere? That's right. Yeah. That's going to be wonderful. Tell me a little bit about making this documentary. Uh, well, it was one of those things that came to me out of the blue. I, you know, as a documentary filmmaker, I deal with a lot of subjects that are kind of heavy. I mean, you know, documentary. Mm -hmm. And I've always, as a musician, wanted to make a music doc. And somebody saw one of the films that I made, believe it or not, on the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. uh, and this person was Nigel Sinclair, the producer that's done a lot of rock documentaries in the past with his company Spitfire Pictures. He saw that film, he really took to it and wanted to meet with me, said, hey, do you like the Foo Fighters? And I said, I love the Foo Fighters. Who doesn't like the Foo Fighters? And next thing you know, I'm sitting in a room with Dave Grohl, three-hour meeting, and then suddenly I'm at their rehearsal with my cameras and making a documentary on the Foo Fighters. There were some people that really resented me for starting this band. But I didn't want to just always be known as this guy that played drums at Nirvana. I was playing for 13 hours a day and being told, what's wrong with you? We had already spent three months and a million dollars on something that we threw away. I was just so sick of it. I was just so sick of the whole thing. He is not a guy I'm going to be in a band with. No way. Why do we need to get somebody that used to have my job? I just started to think that we should stop. Well, if the Foo Fighters are over, the Foo Fighters are over. And I'm OK with that. That's it. Oh, well. Kind of imagine that after playing to 85,000 people, God, what do we do now? We'll make a huge rock record in a garage. Honestly, had I taken this whole career thing seriously, I would have named it something else because it's the worst fing band name in the world. Awesome opportunity. How long did it take to make this documentary? It was a very quick schedule. We started filming in August for just a few days while they were rehearsing for their album. But then in October, when they started making, recording their new album, uh, I went in and followed them for you know the few months that it took to do the album. And then we cut the film and it was done by the beginning of March. So it was a very, very quick production schedule. Um. The the person that you're talking about that helped you or brought you into this project, he makes a lot of rock documentaries. And um, can I ask why the Foo Fighters? The Foo, uh, you know, I, that's something that um, he's a fan. How, how how it all came together? Yeah. But uh, you know, I've been a big fan of the Foo Fighters for a long time. Yeah. And the thing is, I, I I've only ever had their music on my iTunes. You know, I've never gone to one of their concerts. So the first time I ever got a chance to hear them play live was when I'm, I'm sitting in Dave's, Dave Grohl's garage yeah. where he actually made this album. The entire album was recorded in his garage. And uh, I got a chance to sit there and, and hear every one of those guys play their parts and, and record them. It was, it was pretty cool. Did it open up your idea of other documentaries that you might want to venture off to? It Definitely. I, you know, I'd love to be able to do uh, more music documentaries, but it also made me want to learn how to play the guitar. Oh, really? <laughs> That's interesting. I know. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, making this documentary. You had um, archived footage that you probably had to go through, but you also hung out with the band and followed the band? I did, yeah. The archived footage, I mean, the band's been around now. He started it 16 years ago, Dave. Yeah. So we had over 1,000 hours of footage 
in our editing system to pull from for this movie, which was not easy to get it down. You know, it's, it's, it's an hour and 40 minutes that the movie running time. Yeah. Uh, and then we hung out with them for the entire making of the new album, Wasting Light, and I got a chance to see that whole process in action. So the film really does cover their entire history, their mm-hmm. entire 16 year span, and then the last part of the movie is seeing them in action making a new album. Wow. So tell me about uh, the release. I know that uh, there's going to be this is a premiere, and it will eventually be released nationwide and actually internationally. Eventually, we don't have a set date on that right now. I believe the international is happening right after this. Oh, okay. April fifth date. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, in, it's in quite a few theaters, and it's all done with this this live via satellite technology, mm-hmm. with the band playing a concert, the theater goers right after. That's going to be fantastic. Especially for documentaries. Pretty interesting way of, of distributing a film. It's going to be great. I know that uh, uh, Spitfire Films um, is the one that has uh, been producing this, right? Yeah, Spitfire Pictures produced mm-hmm. it. Nigel Sinclair, who oversees Spitfire Pictures, is the one who brought me into the film. Mm-hmm. And uh, it came out of nowhere for me. <laughs> Well, it's definitely opened a lot of new ideas and a lot of new doors. I know that's going to do that for a lot of people watching the Foo Fighters. They're such a wonderful band, and, and this might actually bring a lot of new people on board to see how talented this band, in fact, actually is, as well as seeing some of your stuff. Tell how people can get more information on this film and its release and even your, even your past films and keep an eye on you in the future. Well, there's a website for the film specifically, which is foofightersfilm.com, and then uh, my website is allentownproductions.com, because I'm from Allentown, Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. so they named the company after that, and so um, the, some of the past films that I've done. Wonderful. Uh, that is so great. So we're, we're, we're giving away uh, a pair of tickets to the first caller right after this interview, and so people are going to pick up the tickets at the box office there in Las Vegas. Do you know what the venue is? I was hoping you would. (laughs) We'll let people know that. Thanks so much for speaking with us. Hey, my pleasure. And good luck in the future. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. And, of course, keep an eye out for everything that James Mall is doing. What a great documentary filmmaker. You can go on the web and look him up. And, as well, we want to thank Hannah Stember from BNK PMC New York City Entertainment for letting us have this interview and, of course, supplying those tickets to us. And, of course, the Foo Fighters.